Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to The Art of Water. Today we're going to be working on this water box cube 20 behind me over here. Uh, this is an aquarium that I received from Waterbox just a few weeks ago. I really haven't had a chance to do much with it. I've been sort of laying out a design that I think is going to be a lot of fun. It's a design that's not unique in any way, but it is unique to me because I've only tried it once before and uh, we're gonna really have some fun with this. I hope you'll join me, stay with me. We're gonna get right to it here. Welcome back everybody. And uh, I wanted to go over with you a little bit of the products that we're gonna be using today. I don't wanna go really in depth on it and make this a very long video, but I wanted to talk about a couple of the main things that we're going to be doing to start this build and uh, sort of progress along with it here. Now the first product right here is uh, no stranger to anybody who follows my channel. It's Fluval Stratum. Uh, this is my substrate of choice for so many different reasons. I don't think that I've done really anything uh, that I haven't used this product because uh, when it was introduced to me by someone who was very much into the hobby and had been for a long time. Uh, he explained to me why he uses it and uh, I have found that the things that he talked about with me as far as it being new, uh, very mineral rich, uh, uh, it really offers up a, a neutral pH. So if you do have fish, uh, uh, and invertebrates and things like that that uh, need a different pH of some kind. You may have to adjust that by the kind of stone that you're using or some products that you might be adding to the tank uh, that will help straighten out that pH. I don't like to use any kind of really heavy chemicals to adjust pH and that sort of thing. I like it to be as natural as it possibly can, but I do find that this product here is really uh, not always neutral. I find that depending on what rock I use it with, it's on the lower end of 7.0 or slightly on the upper end of 7.0. It just really depends on the type of rock that you're using. Now, the kind of rock that we're gonna be using for this particular build is called Cirrostone, or Cirro Rock, if you wanna call it that. And uh, that is spelled S-E-I-R-Y-U. And anyone who has been in the hobby for a while is going to know this particular rock and uh, will tell you that it just has a tremendous amount of character to it. And uh, that's uh, something uh, that I really wanted to bring to this particular aquarium. So I decided to use it based on the fact that uh, I think it's going to be a nice contrast against the very dark substrate that we've got going here. And uh, the lighter stone is just going to offer up with the black background that's uh, part of this tank. It's just going to offer up, I think, a real, real nice contrast that's going to look beautiful in this particular aquarium. Now, the stone itself, the Sura stone, is something that I really, really like because it does offer some really, really beautiful uh, textures to it. If you look deeply into uh, this stone as far as the kind of character that it has. You can have one side look like this. You can turn it over and you can get a completely different look. A lot of people call this look elephant skin. And uh, this side not so much, but uh, as you look at these pieces here, you can see that they do offer just some very unique patterns. And they're not very heavy either. They're, they're kind of in a medium range of, of weight. And I really, really like them a lot. Um, you can see just from the two pieces that I'm showing you here to demonstrate this. Got to be careful as I pull these out of here. That This is uh, a look that you're going to get on one side. And then if you turn this around, you can see you're going to get a completely different look on the other side. So it gives you a lot of flexibility 
to sort of use this stone in uh, a way that uh, makes it very, very uh, easy to work with. And uh, man, I was a little worried I almost chipped that on the top. You gotta be really, really careful with this uh, stuff, uh, especially on a new tank when you're doing a build like this. Now, the only reason I have the light going here is to give us some light here to show you what I'm doing. But getting back to the build itself, these are the two products that I wanted to talk about a little bit with you before we get into this build. And I also want to let you know the design that we're going to be doing. As I mentioned in the video, this is a design that I've only done uh, a couple of times. Um, so it's not something I'm real comfortable doing, but I'm really looking forward to it because um, I think it's just going to look really unique. Now, we're not going to be using any wood with this build at all. This is going to be sort of a cliff-like canyon style uh, build and design. And uh, basically, so you will have rocks coming down from this side and this side. And then the center portion of this will be sort of a woven path through here that uh, will weave along the center. And that will have uh, its own... Um, type of stone in there to also give it a nice contrast against uh, the rock and also against the substrate. So I'm really looking forward to that. I have not decided exactly what color that's going to be. I have a couple of different varieties of gravel and small pieces of uh, crushed rock and also some sand uh, that can be used with this, but I'm not exactly 100% sure what I'm going to do. But I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about this before we get into this build so that you do understand. Like I said, Fluval Stratum is a fantastic product. It's uh, great for plants, uh, good for pH. It's very mineral rich and uh, it, it really, really does last a long time in a planted aquarium. It's, uh, it's volcanic. Um, in in nature so it, it just has this uh, real nice ability to take that good bacteria and have it just kind of stick to it and uh, that's what we're looking for now I don't have enough here we're probably gonna go this is an 8.8 .8 pound bag or fill four kilograms and uh, that's not really probably going to be enough for this build so I am going to be tearing down three other aquariums and putting the fish from those aquariums. I've already decided which ones those are going to be. They're all five gallon aquariums and uh, we're going to be using the substrate from those so that we do get an instant cycle. Uh, all healthy tanks, many of them have been around for a year or more. Uh, in fact, I have one here that was actually been set up for almost two years. I don't really want to tear it down, but I think it's time. Uh, if you're like me, you like to see new things happen, and that's what we're going to have happen in here. So stick with me. We're going to get to the build on this here in the next segment, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So welcome back everybody. We're going to start this uh, hardscaping now and one of the first things we want to do is we want to seed this tank as I talked about and we're going to do that with uh, some uh, substrate that came out of another build. I just tore it down and we have plenty enough uh, median here substrate to uh, seed this tank. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that and uh, I'll walk you through the process as we go through this. Now, right now, basically, I have the uh, substrate that has the beneficial bacteria in it in here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just dump that basically in the center of the tank. And then we'll start putting in our fluval stratum um, to get going on uh, some height on this and start working around it a little bit so that we can uh, get uh, to a level to where we can start putting rocks in. So as you can see, there is some liquid in this. There's not much, but there's enough really basically to uh, really get this off to a really good start. 
We don't want a lot of water in here. Uh, that was just to really kind of keep the substrate going um, with the bacteria in it so that the bacteria didn't die off. It's been really less than 30 minutes since I took this out of that aquarium that was going. And uh, I'm going to turn the lights back on on this one here simply because I want to be able to see a little bit better. All right, so there we go on that. Right now we're going to open this bag of Fluval Spec uh, Stratum, not Spectrum, Stratum. And I am going to dump this into the back area because that's where this is going to be needed the most. Uh, we need some height to start our build. And as you notice, I'm keeping it from the front because I want the back part of the tank to have um, some good amount of uh, uh, substrate so that we can place the rocks in there and we can uh, start building. I'm going to smooth this out with my hand. I also have another tool that uh, everybody, if you watch my videos, you know what I'm talking about when I say another tool and that is going to be my paintbrush but we don't need it at this point what we're going to do at this point is we're going to start looking at the rocks that we have i've leveled this out as best i can and uh, we'll pat it down a little bit and uh, get this level and uh, keep it going here so I'm going to start picking out some of the rocks that I think should go back here. I'm going to put my glasses on for this because I want to make sure that I'm picking rocks that I really like and really want to have in these back corners. Now, this one here, I'm not too sure how I want to use this. Uh, the point is probably what we want to have go in here first. Now, as you can see, I'm keeping this away from the edges enough to where I can clean, get my hands down in here, and also away from the back so we don't scratch anything as far as glass or anything like that. And uh, as we go through this, I'm going to um, be using a brush that... Uh, I'm going to have to look this one over real well and kind of see how I want to use it, but I'm thinking probably about like this right here. Now this starts to take shape, as you can see here, it starts to take shape as this little canyon type area over in here. And of course, when you put rocks in, you're going to displace um, some of the substrate. That's going to happen. That's just the way it is with this stuff. And that's okay because we can we can fix it and move it around as we see fit. Now the next thing we want to do is put something right here that has a little bit of size to it, and uh, this may be too big, but we don't have to put it straight on. We can put it at an angle. I'm gonna push that down in there. Now, as you can see, we've got height on both sides of this. And now I'm going to go ahead and open up a second bag here of substrate because I want to get some uh, substrate in behind. Um, let's go ahead and do that right now. Some of the substrate is going to come down through and bury some of the rock that's in there. I used about half of the bag in here, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall through here a little bit. Let me uh, go get my tool for this. Okay. 
the primitive tool of uh, paintbrush, which I use for all of my builds. This is not something that I came up with. It's a gentleman that uh, most of us know who are in the hobby by the name of James Finley, and there's also George Farmer, both of which uh, kind of uh, came up with the idea of using a paintbrush because it works just really well for moving things around and getting, getting things straightened out. And uh, that's kind of what we're looking to do here. We've got the substrate pretty high up and that's because we want to be able to put some taller plants back in here without uh, having a lot of problems um, with um, not having enough uh, places for them to root. Uh, I like to put a um, big, thick um, layer of substrate in here, as I said earlier in my other videos. Uh, the reason for that is, is because if you put in a big, thick uh, amount of substrate, you're going to get way more beneficial bacteria in that tank to really help uh, establish it. And that's really the, the main reason why I do it. Uh, as you can see here, there's about two and a half inches on here. Our goal is going to be about the same uh, in the front here. So we're going to use the rest of this. We've got our height in the back, and we're going to use the rest of that to basically work our way into getting this. Now we want to have a slope here because that gives a perception of depth, and that's very important when you're doing... Um, when you're doing this, that you do have that perception of depth. You don't want to cover up all your rock and destroy the image of uh, what you're trying to do, but at the same time, you want to be able to uh, clearly uh, establish that um, about the same height all the way across the front here. doesn't have to be perfect perfect because when you put in your your stones uh, that you're going to be working in this direction with um, they're going to uh, displace a lot of this this soil or substrate anyway so we want to just have kind of an idea on where things are going with that so we're going to pick some rocks out now that uh, sort of start to build this little canyon area here and I'm going to look for some rocks that I think are going to work really well for that. I came up with this one earlier and I think I showed that to you and I decided to use this side of it uh, because it's it's got some really unique character to it. So I'm going to use that there. Then I have another one here that I thought was kind of cool. It's got some interesting look right here, but it's also got this interesting little pattern right here. So I thought perhaps that could go right in here. Now, when you're putting stones in, if you're doing a lot of stones, it doesn't matter whether it's an even number or an odd number, but if you are doing just five, three, five, seven stones, you want to make sure that you have an uneven number or an odd number of stones because what happens is if you don't, then things start to look a little weird because they're even. Uh, but if you get a lot of stones going, you don't have to worry about that. We're going to pick out a few more here to start uh, working on our front area. Um, there's a lot of flat ones in here. and. Uh, I'm going to start, this one here is kind of a cool look to it, and uh, I'm going to place that right in there. And then over here, we have this guy here, which has a, is another, you know, some cool sides to this here, but I don't really think that that's going to add the character that I really want to that. So what we're going to try to do is... Uh, 
get this to sit right down in here. And you want to make sure that they're anchored in there real well uh, so that they look more natural. If they're, if they're sticking up too high, uh, the whole idea is as you come forward that you have smaller rocks as you're going. Now this one here, kind of tricky because it doesn't really have any real serious character to it, but we'll just kind of put it in here like this. Step back and take a look at it. I like the way that looks. And then we're going to start using some stones that sort of flatten out as they come forward here. And I like this one because, again, this pattern on here is really kind of cool. As you see on this side of it, there really isn't a, a really nice pattern, but there is as we come forward here. And uh, we make kind of a an area where it shelves out a little bit. Same thing with this one here. There's not a lot of pattern on it, but this is really flat here. Uh, I might even do the two of these together like this, or I may not put any more in at all. I may start to uh, look at the way this is looking. So let's see here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a uh, that would be 10, 11 if we were able to get these in here. I don't know that we're going to be able to do that, but uh, let's just kind of see how this works out and uh, kind of go from there. Might be able to use these back in here somehow if we can find the right way to use them. That gives us a little bit of a ability to add some, some height and depth back in there. And we might be able to do the same thing with this one. If we can somehow get this in here and get it to be a little bit lower than the other. You start to see, as you can see, you start to see some hill type areas. And that's really what we want. Then we have a bunch of smaller pieces that we can kind of distribute around and uh, just kind of see how these fit in. Let's lay these out on here and uh, see what we can do with these. Again, this one here has got some really cool pattern to it, which I like. So I'm gonna sort of put that right about there just so that it's, uh, we're able to see that nice little pattern. And uh, this one here, we'll just sort of work in right here. Now we're getting a lot of stones in here, is what we're doing. And uh, basically, once we start doing that, you know, we'll work them towards the front and uh, put them in areas where they can be seen, but they're not uh, the main focal point. You can see now that we've, we've sort of got uh, ourselves some mountainous looking areas here. This one here, I'm a little bit not really sure about that one in a lot of ways because of uh, the way it's setting, but uh, I think that looks better. I'm not sure I like that. So we're going to try to tilt that down a little bit and have that sharp little edge on it. Now we've got a, a V shape here coming in and the rocks start to work their way in this direction. Uh, let's see if we can turn some of these uh, to sort of be a little bit easier on the eye. And. Uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the paintbrush and we're gonna go along and we're gonna sort of fill in the gaps here and even them out. Uh, we've got a lot, of, a lot of substrate in here, which is what we wanted. And uh, now we just gotta even that substrate out along the front and the sides here. And uh, what I like to do is I like to just use the tip of the brush to sort of pat things down and uh, make them look uh, nice and uh, flat. 
do the same thing over here. As you can see, this is about the same height all the way along here. We've got about two to two and a half inches somewhere in there um, of substrate. And as I said, I, I really like to use that amount because it really helps for the uh, substrate to be um, able to be moved around as much as we want to. Uh, we want to be able to uh, work our way through this and uh, just sort of even it out. I'm not going to talk a whole lot while I'm doing this because there isn't a whole lot to say, but uh, as you can see, there's, uh, there's some ridges along here. I want to make sure my hand can get in there, which it cannot. So I'm going to pull this in a little bit. That way I've got the ability to get in there and clean up with a, with a sponge if I need to. If, uh, you know, we get some algae along the walls or, or the walls get dirty. Like I said, you want to try to keep as much of uh, space as you can and uh, keep these areas nice and clean so that you can uh, Sweating. Got air conditioning in the house and I'm still sweating. So, I don't know. Same thing over here. We're going to just sort of uh, work the soil in from behind here, pat it down, get it nice and tight around these rocks, and uh, get it in a situation where everything feels nice and compact here, that the stones feel solid. Again, you know, we're going to look at this area along here and just try to keep it on a nice slope so that uh, when we're uh, putting water in here, we're not going to want to disturb this very much. And we're going to, you know, you always want to try to find a spot where you're going to put your water in where you're not going to disturb the tank very much. And uh, that's really an important goal to have because if you don't, uh, you're really going to be in a situation sometimes where um, these hills in the back can actually collapse on themselves. And that just really makes a big mess and you don't want that. So what I've done basically at this point, I'm not going to use any uh, wood in here at all, as I said. I do have some smaller pieces here. I don't think that I'm going to use these. I, there was some thought that maybe these smaller pieces I would be able to uh, use for this somewhere along here, but uh, that doesn't give us much place uh, to put our, our, uh, our low-lying uh, plants for the front of the tank and so we want to make sure uh, I do what they call a dry uh, planting on, on plants because I just find it so much easier to get the plants to stay in place. Uh, I did harvest a bunch of plants from the tank that I tore down uh, to get the plants for this. And uh, I think uh, with that, uh, there is a lot of roots on those. We'll probably have to trim those roots up a bit before we get too far into this. But uh, we, will, we will do what they call a dry... Um, now you can see it's, it's about even all the way along there. Now you can see the moisture line from our substrate from the old build. And uh, that's important that we get that 
uh, and get that all straightened out there. And I want to take a little closer look at this, step back, and kind of assess this a little bit, uh, and see what I think from a distance back. So I'm going to go ahead and take a minute and uh, assess this and we'll come back and uh, we'll do more on this and we'll start doing our plants. Thank you. 